Good evening. Uh, Thank you so much um, to all of you, um, but especially thanks to the Rumi Forum. It's a real honor to be awarded in such amazing company um, uh, tonight and also in previous awards. I'm, I'm very grateful uh, and humbled um, and inspired by the mission of the Rumi Forum um, around dialogue across many different divides that I think is incredibly important uh, in our world, in all of our personal lives, family, work, and, and globally. Um, I also wanted to say a big special uh, thank you to Carol Bellamy, who, um, as you could see from her speech tonight, um, is an incredible intellect, but she is also a real firepower. Uh, and it's much better to be Carol's friend than the other way around. She is formidable uh, and visionary um, and has um, had a huge impact on the in the global education community. Uh, so I want to, to thank her for that. Um, I, I wanted to just say a couple things. First, I wanted to share with all of you how I even got into global education. Um, I started out actually as a youth environmental activist. I grew up in a very small town in Oregon uh, and was very um, into recycling and um, planting trees and, all, and, and, and that type of thing. It actually never occurred to me to go into education. Um, and then I started, um, uh, I did an internship in college um, in banana plantations in Latin America. And that opened my eyes in an incredible way to, you know, the vast differentials uh, in opportunity uh, and well-being in poor communities in the developing world to poor communities in my hometown or area or the United States. Both have large, large needs, um, but ever since then, and one, one of, I, I had two experiences um, that shaped my interest in education. One was, um, again, working on this banana plantation uh, with, whoops, I almost knocked my award over. That would have been problematic. Um, with uh, um, uh, a range of, of uh, banana workers who were, who should have been wearing protective clothing. They were spraying lots of very dangerous pesticides. Um, and, you know, when I asked them, why are you not doing that? They said, well, actually, we, we, you know, we didn't, they couldn't read. They couldn't read. They didn't know how to put the, the they couldn't follow the directions. Um, so that was my first sort of thought of, hmm, literacy, that seems like an, a foundational important thing. My, my second uh, um, uh, experience, again, I was working in Latin America. I had returned um, right after college. I was working um, with refugees. Uh, and one of the things I was working on was uh, legal reforms for um, women who had been um, victims of gender-based violence. And these were incredibly important reforms, would um, take a long time to be put in place, but were incredibly important in terms of the rights of victims of gender-based violence. And when I went and talked to the women and read what they wanted in terms of um, getting up to speed on what those reforms are, uh, they said, actually, you know, we appreciate these reforms. They're incredibly important. But we are all um, suffering from, you know, domestic violence. It's hard to live in our homes. Uh, and really what we would like is literacy programs because we cannot read, we cannot write, and we cannot leave. Uh, and again, ever, se ever since those two experiences, um, I started thinking a lot about education uh, and how fundamental it is um, to be able to read and write. Uh, to be able to name the world in your own words, to be able to be free. You can travel where you want to go in the world because you're able to navigate on your own. I mean, if you've ever known someone who's not able to read or write, or just imagine for a moment, if you're not, I'm, none of you in the room, I'm sure, um, uh, are illiterate, but you probably wouldn't be here if you weren't highly educated. But it is a very small world and a very small life, uh, if in, not in terms of dignity or worth, but in terms of opportunity and ability. Um, 
uh, to do what you would like to do if you're not literate. So that that is what inspired me to get into education, into global education. There is needs in our own country. Um, I uh, concentrated around the world and, and worked in many countries around the world and, and, and um, now at the Brookings Institution feel very privileged to be able to work with incredible colleagues thinking about policy um, and how to have a bigger impact and how to scale up reforms and how to drive resources and attention to these issues. Um, and uh, we work on a, a wide range of things, um, including and in particular girls' education uh, and trying to lift the global ambition for girls' education. Uh, Carol talked a lot about the scope of global education, um, but just a few thoughts for all of you, remaining thoughts um, before the night is out. Um, you know, the world has been focused heavily on making sure girls and boys enroll in school in equal numbers, and that is incredibly worthy and a job that's not yet done. But there are vast, quote unquote, hot spots, girls' education hot spots in the world that was mentioned, certainly some of them tonight. Um, and those are areas where get, looking at getting kids into school in equal numbers is not enough. You have to look at safety. You know, there are literally girls who, uh, several people mentioned Malala, but she is one of many, 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 many girls who put their life on the line when they try to get educated. So safety, you have to look at quality. There's 250 million kids around the world, a vast majority of them in school, having spent four years in school and cannot read and write. And if you cannot learn to read and write in the first four years of school, anybody who has kids or if you can remember back, you're not really going to have a good successful educational trajectory. You cannot go on and master your history or your science, et cetera, and you're going to drop out. Um, so there, you know, what's the point of access in some ways if you're not actually able to, to give kids the, the, the skills they need to be successful? Um, uh, and lastly, uh, one of the most important pieces, this is what I want to end on, is in girls' education is making sure uh, that we can find a lot better ways, and this is something that I think the Rumi Forum um, is uh, a piece of, of what they're so uh, focused on, a lot better ways of supporting local leaders to find solutions. Um, it's very hard if you are a girls' education entrepreneur or local community leader um, to find the support, financial or otherwise, to keep going. And a lot of them get burned out along the way. So supporting local leaders to do this work, um, I think, is incredibly important. And, and I, I want to um, just say that, like uh, the previous speakers, there's a lot we can do with, with little time that we have and little effort, a lot can be accomplished. And this is, particularly in girls' education, this is an area that has seen huge progress, huge progress. Um, and there's still a long way to go. Um, but there's a lot that can be, can be done if we all uh, put, put our mind to it and work together. So thank you very much. <laughs>